that'd be good. Uh, lunch after this talk, uh, which is again in the same place as, as yesterday, um, which is just sort of round the corner. So if you uh, if you want to head that way after this talk, so we've got what looks like a really interesting talk coming up from Dave, uh, the WordPress cartoonist, a user's perspective. Um, Dave is a freelance. Uh, cartoonist based in Essex. Uh, he's used WordPress to create cartoon websites since 2005. And he draws a weekly cartoon for the Church Times newspaper. Uh, so it sounds like a, a great talk. So I'll hand you over to Dave. Let's give a round of applause. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave. I'm a cartoonist and an incredibly enthusiastic WordPress user and I hope to convey this in this talk. It's my first time doing this sort of thing, so please be kind, laugh out loud, even if my cartoons are nonsensical, etc. My slides uh, will be on speaker deck and should miraculously appear on my website halfway through this talk. I can't see how that could possibly go wrong. So, who will this talk be useful for? I've drawn a picture. First of all, anyone using or thinking of using WordPress to run a creative business. I'll be showing you how I came to use WordPress, why I love it, how I use it, and some of the things that I've got badly wrong that would have been useful to know at the start. Next, coders, developers, and other people doing highly technical things. I'm hoping that, whilst I'm unlikely to provide you with any brand new insights into the inner workings of WordPress, that a user's perspective will be interesting for you. So see me as a case study, a guinea pig, and if I don't talk about the aspects that interest you, do ask me about them in the question time or afterwards. And then, latecomers, those who turned up to the wrong room, etc. I'll be showing some cartoons, so I hope you enjoy them. As you can see, I've only drawn an audience of three, and the dotted lines are a lazy cartoonist <laughs> trick for drawing everyone else. So, first of all, some disclaimers. Firstly, I'm not going to teach you how to draw cartoons or how to be a cartoonist, but in case anyone does want to know, this is the cartoon creation process simplified version. Disclaimer two. Never take technical advice from a cartoonist. <laughs> I had a lot more hair when I drew this cartoon. It's not that I'm not technically competent, but I'm a cartoonist, not a WordPress specialist. And a third and final disclaimer. This talk is not intended to say, look at me, aren't I brilliant? Look what a success I've made of everything. Whilst I've had some successes, which I'll be talking about in the next 10 minutes, I've also made a lot of mistakes, and I'll be telling you about some of those too later on in the talk. So first of all, a couple of examples of my work, just so we know uh, what kind of thing I do, so which might help, to, uh, help you to understand what I'm talking about later on. So first of all, this is one for freelancers. Locations of this year's tax paperwork. <laughs> 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 and this uh, is how I organise my desk. So just to give you an idea of where I, where I keep everything on my desk. Um, now I do a lot of um, cartoons of a, of, of a kind of a church theme, and this is one that I did for the newspaper I draw for, called the Hierarchy of Biscuits. And um, hopefully it makes sense even if you, you're not in that particular world. So we've got the, the gold foil wrapped juggle, double chocolate deluxe for the, um, the dignitaries. Then we've got the digestive, then the chocolate chip cookie, bourbon, custard cream, ginger nut. Then at the bottom, those pink wafer ones, the nice biscuit, the malted milk, and the rich tea. So I draw about all sorts of different topics, some more serious than others. And this is one that I've done I did a few years ago about food banks. Um, so this was in 2013. Um, perhaps we need to ask why this is happening. And just to give another example of one on a topic, um, this is a climate change cartoon about those who are most responsible, least vulnerable, versus those who are least responsible, most vulnerable. 
So that just gives you an idea of the kind of, the kind of work that I do. So, how did I start using WordPress? Well, my story begins in 1996. Oasis were topping the charts. It was the Atlanta Olympics, and I was starting to draw cartoons at a college in Dorset. So this was my room in the college, and it was on a corridor that lots of people had to walk down. And so I'd post the cartoons that I would, had drawn on my door, and people would stop and read them. And I suppose this, for me, was my pre-internet, at least for me, uh, example of a website in that I would post them on the door, people would stop and look at them. Um, and just to give an example of the kind of cartoon quality, um, you know, the artwork's a bit uh, flaky, but this is the kind of thing that I was drawing. So um, suddenly he pulled the cord on his ejector seat. This is sitting in a lecture. So at the time I had a car. This is the best photo of me taken in the 1990s. Um, now I no longer needed the car. I had a friend who had a computer who no longer needed the computer, so we did a swap. So with my new 14K modem, I connected to the internet, and before long, I learned a bit of HTML and put a website up on GeoCities, which will mean something to a few of you, but not to others. Um, and so I was able to put cartoons and other nonsense online. Fast forward to 2002, I met lots of brilliant creative people, one of whom was a friend, um, became a friend, Chris Taylor from Yorkshire, and he started, he and I started a community blogging site. And so this is my earliest example, one of my early examples of blogging. Um, this is all still pre-WordPress, but for me at the time, this was an amazing technological advancement to be able to put my cartoons online. So my cartoons were gradually becoming a bit more popular, seen online. And to cut a long story short, eventually I sent some off to a newspaper who agreed to publish them. And so I had a way into being a, uh, a full-time cartoonist. So just to give an example, I was drawing a lot of church-themed cartoons at the time. And here's an example of one. This will be entirely nonsensical to you if you're not in that world. But this is the kind of thing I was doing. The artwork had still not really improved that much. Um, and this is about bishops um, standing in the corner. So around this time, I heard about a new piece of software called WordPress, and so I began a new cartoon blog using it. And here we have my, uh, this is my early, um, this is my WordPress website in approximately 2005. And it went on to be absolutely central to the way that I made my living. And I'll say a bit more about that in a few mom moments. But first of all, I want to say why I love WordPress. Now, it's always tricky to know if you have new material. If you're a band, you have a new song, do you play it at the beginning? Do you save it up? And will the crowd like it? So this is a brand new cartoon that nobody has seen apart from um, Ross, my proofreader. Um, and uh, so here goes. It's 20 panels, so I'm going to run through them quite quickly. So this is 20 reasons to love WordPress. It's easy to learn. Well, fairly easy. There's no need to edit code. A community built it and keeps it going. You can install it in five minutes. Search engines love it. It's great for mobile phones. There's always somebody, someone to help with problems. You can use plugins to do lots more. Over 25% of all websites use it. It does a lot more than just blogging. You don't need to be an expert to update your site. There are many brilliant free themes. You can update your site from anywhere. People can comment and interact. Your data is on a site you own. It's great for pictures, audio and video. It updates automatically for security. You can have multiple users. You can impress your friends with a beautiful website. And it's free. And this is my 20 reasons to love WordPress cartoon that I will shortly put on my, uh, my website. Now, I want to show you how WordPress is central to the way I make my living as a cartoonist. Now, this is a pie chart that my accountant desperately wants to see once every year. Um, so this is a very approximate 
breakdown of how um, I make my living. So I do cartoons for regular clients who um, I've built up over the years, who I do for all the time. Then I've got one-off commissions uh, from people who've often seen my work on one of my sites. Uh, license sales, which I'll explain in a minute what that means. Then book advances and royalties. So the books are on my site, um, and sometimes the people who commission the books have uh, seen me online. And then merchandise. So how does this work in practice? Now, I've got five ways that a cartoonist can use WordPress, and I hope this would be applicable to other creative industries as well. There may well be more than five, but these are the ones that I thought of. One additional disclaimer, I've only used three and a half of these five methods. So I'm going to demonstrate each one with one of my own websites where applicable. So first of all, blogging, which I have already talked about a bit. And this is my cartoon blog. So over the 12 years, I've had a blog on WordPress. It has contained a mixture of serious news, cartoons about serious news, the latest work I've been doing, competitions, and a certain amount of messing around as well. The benefits of the blogging approach, it puts you in the center of a community of like-minded people whilst enabling you to show off your work. There's a lot more I could say about blogging. That's probably a ho whole other talk. But my main advice for bloggers is be interesting in whatever way. I don't do so much now as other parts of my work has grown, but blogging has been absolutely central to um, what I've been able to do. So secondly, using uh, WordPress for a stock image site, and this is something I do. So this is um, cartoonchurch.com, which is my cartoon licensing site. Now, every local parish church has something called a parish magazine. This is usually an A4 photocopied booklet with a pastel coloured cover. And uh, I supply cartoons to make parish magazines more interesting. And so having uh, done weekly cartoons for 12 years, I've built up quite a back catalogue. So selling licences is one of the ways that I make my living. I've been using WordPress to do this since 2005, but the advent of membership plugins has made this so much easier. It means that I can automate, for instance, the process of sending out renewal emails to people and that kind of thing, and that <coughs> has made a huge difference to me. And I'll talk a little bit more about membership plugins in a few moments. So example number three is a portfolio website. And this is my example. It's not the most shining example of a um, brilliant design. But uh, this was a site I put, on a few, put online a few years ago to showcase my cycling-themed cartoons. Now, social media, and in particular Facebook, has been a vitally important, um, has been very important in the success of this venture. And I could talk a lot more about social media, but again, this is probably a separate talk. But I, despite social media, I still see it as absolutely crucial to have a website, which is your own base on the web, where people can always find your work and you're not relying on a third party service. So as a result of this website and putting cartoons online, cycling cartoons online, I've drawn cycling cartoons for all sorts of different clients, and I spent a significant chunk of 2016 writing and drawing a book on the topic. And um, here we are, and this book will be out in June. And it wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't had a WordPress site that I was able to put everything up online, and uh, the publishers discovered um, my work online, um, and so I have a lot to be thankful on that front. So fourth, membership sites. Whilst I've used membership uh, plugins to help me run my licensing, I've not yet run a full membership website, but I'm working on one. And here we have the uh, uh, work in progress. <laughs> uh, brilliant site, not yet built, cartoons and member benefits. Now, a lot of uh, artists are using a site called Patreon to fund their work, where people pledge a certain amount of money each month and in return get benefits. So they maybe see your work first, or they get downloads, or they get merchandise in return for making um, a payment. 
So I thought, I don't need to be paying Patreon fees. I can do this myself using WordPress. It should be entirely doable. So watch this space. Uh, it's a work in progress. And number five, using WordPress to sell online. There are brilliant plugins like WooCommerce that allow you to sell, but I must confess that I haven't yet used them as I sell most of my merchandise through third parties. So I tend to link to other places that sell what I do rather than selling on my own website. Um, these are a few of the, the things that I sell, books and tea towels and all sorts of bits and pieces. So I wanted to talk a little bit about themes and plugins. As somebody who has been to a couple of previous word camps, I found it really useful to get practical tips on useful uh, plugins and themes that other people have found useful. So, first of all, themes. And my main advice here is let your content shine. And this is probably a more important, important principle than any specifics about particular themes. So for me, for my work, I need something that will allow an image of about 700 pixels wide. Uh, that's sort of about the minimum size at which it's viewable online. Um, so the theme needs to accommodate that. And I don't want too much other distraction. So I don't want too much design in the theme because I want my cartoon to be the most interesting thing on the page. I definitely don't want a heading over an image, which is a lot of themes have, which is great for some people, but not for a cartoonist. But of course, for you, it will be different depending on the kind of work that you have and uh, what you need. There are cartoon-specific themes, but I've never found one that particularly suits my kind of work. And I could list some of these, but you can Google them just as well as I can. So I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend paying for a theme. Free themes are a great way in, and it means anyone can get going with a WordPress site. But if you're going to be using it for a business site, then it will pay for itself many times over to have one that's been professionally designed um, of a good quality. So for me, I've, uh, I've been looking for modern, simple themes without too much to distract, and also by somebody that I trust. And I've used Genesis themes by Studio Press. Um, I do love their designs. And also a, a um, theme called Generate Press by Tom Osborne, um, with very simple lines and the ability to customize. And I will put the links to these. I'm afraid they're not on my slides, owing to um, slight um, incompetence on my part. But I will put, these, uh, I will put the links on, the, on my website after this, after this talk. So, um, plugins, membership plugins, um, as I've already discussed. The one that I use is called MemberPress, and I'm trying out a plugin called Restrict Content Pro for my new website. There's a, there's a guy called Chris Lima who writes a blog, and he has his finger on the pulse of the membership plugin world, if that interests you. And again, I'll put the link to um, his site on, um, after this talk. So secondly, page builders. I recommend a bit of caution, as some are better than others. And obviously, if you build too many pages using them, you can find yourself with problems in the future if you've relied too much on, your, on a plugin for how your website looks. But for me, uh, they are very useful for doing front pages and just a, a few pages of my website. So the ones I've used is um, page builder by Site Origin, and I'm uh, currently experimenting with one called Beaver Builder. And I will put a link to a, an article by Pippin William, Williamson called um, All About, with a comparison of these different page builders. <coughs> so um, recent posts. Now, some of you may know other ways to achieve this, but for me, using a plugin which shows a list of um, cartoon thumbnails has been absolutely brilliant for me. And um, while researching for this talk, I discovered that the plugin that I use has been discontinued and therefore probably isn't one I should be using. Um, so I won't recommend it to you. Um, and this demonstrates the importance of reviewing your plugins every now and then. 
Then I use sharing plugins, which is essential for somebody doing visual work. You want people to be able to share what you do on social media. And there are many of these available. I tend to go for ones that fit the design of the particular site. I, you know, they're like the buttons as they fit with the design and allow me to customise the, uh, the text for the Twitter link. Then, um, just to heap everything else together, quite a lot of other plugins. So I use one to convert my old GIF images to JPEGs. I use an image optimizer so my cartoons load quickly on mobile phones. I use SEO plugins, backing up plugins, and um, a few others which I won't list. So, some lessons learned. First of all, find your niche. Now this is, in my opinion, key all-purpose advice for making it as a cartoonist as well as for having a successful website. It's really hard to be the number one current affairs cartoonist in the world, but once you narrow it down to one issue, so just to give an example, housing or the environment, or cartoons about a particular interest, say golf or classic cars, once you choose a topic, a niche, it becomes a lot more achievable. And I think it's the same with websites. So if you are um, writing or drawing about something that is specific, it's far more possible to be a significant player in that world. So for me, historically, I've drawn a lot about churches. Now I do a lot about cycling. And then I have other possible things that I know about that I may do cartoons about in the future. So my second uh, lesson learned, and this was learned the hard way, choose a good host. Like many things in life, you get what you pay for. Now I started out with a really inexpensive host and it didn't go very well. The site would go down, sometimes for days on end, and you couldn't talk to them on the phone. Emails took longer and longer to be replied to and it was incredibly embarrassing explaining to people why my site was down yet again. But I stuck with them for years because the prospect of changing host was, for me, at the time, too big a process to even contemplate. But I'm pleased to say that uh, now I have WordPress-specific hosting from a host who I found to be very reliable. I can talk to them on the phone, night or day, and I do both, and they know what they're talking about. So I would definitely recommend that you choose somebody who um, is a good host for your site. Security matters. So in the past, fortunately, quite a number of years ago, I was hacked. A combination of cheap hosting and not taking care to update everything. And at the time, it was a huge headache. So my advice is keep everything up to date and pay a bit more for security. Take care with plugins. One thing I learned was that some plugins take rather greater server resources than others. And one of the reasons my site went down a lot was, in fact, my own fault, I learned in hindsight, that I was using plugins that were hammering the database. Now, I don't really understand the technical details of why exactly, but my understanding is they were making lots of requests to sort of back things up and that, that kind of thing. So my advice is beware of using too many plugins and beware of using settings that are going to cause a strain on the server. Now, you may need to talk to somebody a bit more expert than I to understand the specifics of uh, what that means. But uh, that was a lesson that I, I had to learn the hard way. The great news is that despite my various technical problems, I've always found lots of people who are willing to help. So for me, this has often meant Twitter, as I uh, have used Twitter a lot, but also the WordPress forums or the forum of whatever plugin I've been having problems with. And the room here where you can go for advice um, is absolutely brilliant, and I was in there yesterday. So it's great to know there's lots of people who can help you. And in return, help other people. So most people that you meet in everyday life don't make, know how to make a website, and you do. So if you're a professional web developer, obviously you will need to charge for your services. But for those of us who aren't, why not help people? So encourage somebody to have a first play on WordPress.com or help a fellow business owner with a problem. 
Now I've got one other lesson that I thought of after I'd done my slides, which is be generous but not too generous. Um, and by this I mean I've had a, a lot of benefit from posting cartoons online and letting people see them, you know, without paywalls, without um, charging them to see them. But also, there also comes a time when you can't give absolutely everything away because you need to make a living. So it's finding a balance between being generous with your content, but also uh, finding ways that you can make it pay as well. So, challenges, for me at least. And uh, this is an example of a challenge. Nothing works with anything else. Sorry about that. So, first challenge for me is code. Now, as, my, as WordPress isn't my main thing, I don't understand as well as many of you what goes on under the hood. But fortunately, this is uh, my in-depth graph on the subject. How often a WordPress user has to deal with actual code. You know, when I started, it was a lot. You had to, there's all sorts of little jobs that could only be done by going and changing some code. But gradually, things have improved, for me at least, um, and now plugins can do a lot more. And so this is really a former challenge rather than a current one. Second, for me, and this is a big uh, issue, has anyone brought, bought themselves a brilliant domain years ago but never got around to doing anything with it? And they keep on paying a tenner a year. Um, so this is me. I have too many ideas for new directions that I can take my work in. And I buy the domain and uh, possibly set the site up, and then that's it. Um, so for me, it's a case of thinking, what am I focusing on? So I mean, these are the websites I've shown you. Um, but as well as this, of course, I'm doing lots of drawing commissions, thinking about merchandise. So it's knowing how to, where best to focus uh, your time and your energy. And I suppose I have been guilty of letting some of my um, projects slide a bit because I've gone on to something new and exciting. Now SSL, this is a huge, huge one for me. And I have a cartoon to illustrate. The task I must undertake is towering over me like a great big monolith. It is too big to <coughs> contemplate. So I think I will go and have a little look at the internet. Uh, this, is, this could apply to lots of things, but this has been uh, my approach to SSL. It seems like a huge thing that I uh, am afraid to tackle. Fortunately, I've uh, received a lot of really useful advice over this weekend, so this is now not quite so much of a challenge as it once was. Um, but it's still something that is a, uh, something that I need to uh, face and do. Creativity. Staying fresh without getting worn out. So I love what I do, but the demand to be funny all the time sometimes comes at a cost. And uh, sometimes on a rainy Monday morning, uh, when you have a deadline at 2 p.m. to uh, come up with a joke and a way to illustrate whatever you're drawing about um, can be um, challenging in the same way Staying creative um, with regard to websites sometimes can be difficult. So, in conclusion, the main thing that I want to say to everyone involved with WordPress is thank you. You've made it possible for me to do what I do. It's not always plain sailing, and there are times when, say, an error message comes up or my site runs slowly, or a plugin won't update. And I could list minor gripes, but fortunately now they are minor, and uh, they are occasional, not the norm. So thank you to everyone involved in WordPress, and to anyone considering using WordPress for your business or creative endeavor, I would entirely recommend it. And I hope my experiences have been of some use. Do ask me more. So, thank you everyone. My slides should, by now, possibly, have miraculously appeared on my website. Otherwise, um, they are online at Speaker Deck. And I will be tweeting the reasons to love WordPress cartoons shortly. Any questions?
Yeah, we've got some time for some questions. So if you could raise your hand if you have a question, and um, we'll get a mic over to you, um, and then you can ask your question. Really enjoyed your chat, and the lovely Thank cartoons you. are very funny. Thank you. And it's just a suggestion, really. I was just wondering if WordPress could commission you to do a lovely logo for the back of next year's T-shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Um, roughly, how long does it sort of take to do like a cartoon? I wouldn't have a clue. It depends on whether I have a... how long it takes me to have an idea. Because uh, that is the, the, the most difficult part of it. So um, I generally think if I'm doing something, uh, some of the ones I've shown you, I sort of would set aside a day to think up the idea, to rough it out, to, um, to ink it in sort of finally. So a lot of it for me is writing as well as drawing. So it's the writing behind it that needs to be right for the, um, yeah. the artwork is, in, in, is the easy bit. Really. Yeah, you're telling a story, aren't you, with it? Yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions? Two. Hi, thanks for that. That's really good. Um, the church and cycling seem quite random topics yeah. to have picked. Yeah. I was just wondering what took you to those places. Well, to be a cartoonist, to do good cartoons, I think you need <laughs> to really know your topic. And those are things I know about. So um, I've been a a uh, churchgoer since I can remember, so I know quite a lot about the inner workings of that world. And cycling is my, um, uh, my what I love to do. So um, I know about bike racing, I know about um, using a bike to get from A to B, and those are things that I know, I know enough about the subject to understand where the humour is. And I think that's, that's important. So yes, they are a bit strange, but I think I've always found it important. I've had my most successful work when I've done a niche topic like that rather than try to do something to, you know, political doesn't usually work for me so well. Yeah. That wouldn't work. Do, you, do you find it difficult to find inspiration and how do you make sure that you don't reiterate this similar cartoon that you did last year or the year before? Uh, <laughs> Well, sometimes it's quite handy to you to do the same cartoon you did the year before because people don't have very long memories. So sometimes you can get away, <laughs> you can get away with it. Um, but yes, I probably do reuse the same things um, sometimes. As for inspiration, it's just living life really. That you know, listening to people talking, reading, you know, every, everything is potentially a source of inspiration. Uh, have you ever considered an alternative to WordPress? Use something else to build a website? Well, in the early days, I, I, used, I tried other blogging software. So I used Blogger and I used Movable Type. No, sorry, um, But no, not. I think because I'm doing something else, uh, because I'm doing cartooning, not building websites, once I've sort of learned something, I want to stick with it. And um, I haven't found anything else that has all the same, has the same 20 benefits, so. Yeah. I think we've got one over here and then there's one at the back as well, so. If you do to go to the back and I'll, I'll do this one first. <laughs> Hi, I was just wondering how you get an idea onto a website, so the process, it, so presumably starting off by drawing and then scanning, how, how do you get it? Yeah, so, so now I do my work digitally, so I draw everything on an iPad, um, so that's my, process since last year. So then it's just very much a case of uh, saving the file as a JPEG and then uploading it as you would with other, any other image onto WordPress. So it's, it's very straightforward. In the, in the old days, I would um, draw everything by hand, scan it, and then you'd have an image file that you could then, then upload. Does that, does that answer? Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, Dave, it was a great, uh, great talk. Um, I was just wondering how, since uh, you've got obviously got a lot of imagery on your site and everything like that, how it, how Google plays with it. Um, does it play nicely? Um, do you have to make sure you include lots of words with it in order to get your um, posts um, so referenced? When I was blogging very regularly, um, then I did 
caught very well in Google because I had the text to go with it, and I often got a lot of links to blog posts. Which um, these days, um, I suspect I'm not. There's more competition around, so I suspect not quite so well. And I probably could do better on that front, if I'm to be honest. Um, I probably do need to pay more attention to my SEO than I do. But it's um, it's it's one. It's one thing in a long list of priorities for, for me. And uh, quite often, the, the cartoon I need to get done by tomorrow afternoon is the, is the pressing thing. So, my, Is that on? Yes. My question yes. kind of leads on from that. How do you, because you're doing WordPress as an add-on to your main job, yeah. how do you divide up? How do you say, I've done enough on that? on the website now, I'm going to have to do this. And do you have a pie chart yeah. a bit like the one for your accountant on where your time goes? Yeah, well, uh, if I did have a pie chart, there'd be a procrastinating would probably be, you know, that would be quite a large chunk. Um, I probably do spend too much time on WordPress, if the truth be told. I probably should spend more, more time actually doing my job. But because I do really enjoy, I have come to really enjoy, you know, playing with it, experimenting. Um, you know, trying new plugins, different different things. So I do, I love doing it. I love um, working with WordPress. So uh, if anything, I probably spend too much time. You know, I should probably focus. Well, the point I made about focusing, I should probably just focus on one or two websites and do them really well. But I just enjoy it too much, to, and I keep on coming up with new ideas. I think we've got time for one more question, maybe a couple. Anybody? On the back. Uh, what's, what's your approach when people use your images um, without permission? Or uh, yes, so people using images without permission, it's it ha can be a problem. Um, occasionally, I send somebody an email and say, you know, in an extreme case, I might um, send somebody an email and s say, you know. You shouldn't be using this. The more of a problem is when people um, put things on social media uncredited, which sometimes happens. And that is a bit frustrating, because something can really take off on, on social media, and you get no benefit whatsoever. And that is, for me, as a creator, that is a bit frustrating. Um, and I have had instances where people have um, like even cut off my name and shared, you know, shared something online. Um, but I do try now to make sure that um, when I post on Twitter or Facebook that I always have in the image, I always have my credit. Yeah. Right, quick, quick one, last one. <laughs> where do you see, um, where do you see your cartoons going in the future? Like in five years, where do you want to be? That's a very good question, and uh, I'm I'm sort of open to different directions at the moment. I'm um, I've got this cycling book coming out in June, and. Um, I've got no idea how that's going to go. I'm hoping that that will be very popular and that will open up new new ideas, um, new possibilities, sorry, for me. Um, but otherwise, you know, I've always got um, new ideas, at new sites. So I, I can't really answer that question yet. I'll have to wait and see. But thank you. OK, thanks again today. Let's give another round of applause. Great talk. Okay, so it's...